Hello and welcome to the Quick News Daily Podcast, where we give you all the latest news in under 20 minutes. No fluff, no filler, just news made for the 21st century. Today is Monday, June 8th, and I just want to take a second to welcome our listeners from Overcast. I just started doing some advertising over there, so hopefully you're tuning in from there. For any new listener from any platform, my name is Brett Spangler, and today we're going to go over some headlines, including people coming out to oppose Trump, defunding the police and the debate around it, new polling data, a new bill introduced by Democrats in the House, and finally, the White House adding more fencing around it. So let's get rolling right away. As I mentioned, this weekend saw several prominent figures and former officials coming out to oppose Trump, including Colin Powell, again, George W. Bush, again, and Mitt Romney, again. As I mentioned, this is Powell's second time opposing Trump, having done so back in 2016 as well. That year, even though his relationship with Hillary Clinton was testy, and that's a generous saying, He eventually endorsed her as well, so he's been on the right side of history for a while now. He did all of this during an interview on one of the Sunday morning political talk shows instead of in an article like Mattis and some of the other chiefs last week, and he said it was because he already did that back in 16. How I essentially view this is that it is another stamp of approval on a movement that is growing and gaining traction. Powell used to be a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, along with other high-ranking positions that he held, and that made him the fourth former chairman to say he opposed Trump last week alone. The whispers on the political talk shows I've been listening to seem to be saying that this is emboldening other military leaders to speak out, which is a new concept to them. They feel they should be viewed separately from policy and politics because they spent like 40 years trying to rehab their image after the Vietnam fiasco. So this is really a big deal in terms of the military involvement in speaking out. Again, George Bush also announced that he wasn't supporting Trump, and he did the same thing the last time around, so another stamp of approval here. And finally, get to the curious case of Mitt Romney. He sort of lit the media on fire after sharing this opinion early Sunday and then marching with a group of 1,000 evangelicals later in the day in D.C., saying he was doing it to, quote, make sure people know that black lives matter. Mitt Romney's story is really crazy and hard to make sense of. I've heard a lot of analysts say he's a completely different person in private than when he tries to play politician, and that that private persona is actually starting to poke through. And I think it certainly showed this weekend, as well as during impeachment, when you'll remember he was the only Republican in the Senate to support impeachment, and all the way back in 2016 when he took a flamethrower to Trump and he said this. If we Republicans choose Donald Trump as our nominee, the prospects for a safe and prosperous future are greatly diminished. If Donald Trump's plans were ever implemented, the country would sink into prolonged recession. Isn't he a huge business success? Doesn't he know what he's talking about? No, he isn't. And no, he doesn't. (laughs) Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. (laughs) This is a time for choosing. He has neither the temperament nor the judgment to be president, His personal qualities would mean that America would cease to be a shining city on a hill. I suspect he heard an earful from his family and friends over the last week, as well as his own conscience, when he said he didn't see that Trump photo op that was made possible by tear-gassing peaceful protesters, and that probably just chipped away at his conscience over the last week, so that's probably what moved him to speak out yesterday, that's just my guess at least. I guess in my opinion, it's kind of sad that we need these people to say it's okay to do the right thing. I just don't think you should need someone to tell you that Trump is awful and dangerous. But on this show, I stress, why does it matter to you? And I realize that there are people out there who despise Trump, but also hate the idea of voting for a Democrat. So maybe you or one of your friends and family may change their mind after hearing this and pull the trigger for Biden. It may only be a few, but that might be all that is necessary since I think this election will be a squeaker, unfortunately. Another thing I saw a lot of over the weekend was the debate over the defund the police slogan going around. A lot of those same never-Trump Republicans were saying that this was a terrible idea and a gift to Donald Trump, but I think that's sort of focusing on the wrong thing. 
The defense is that the defund just means to reduce funding and demilitarize the police so that they don't look like marines while Sue, the elementary teacher down the street, has to buy her own crayons and dry erase markers because funding was cut so dramatically. Also, all the Democrats in Congress and Joe Biden himself have said that they don't want to defund or disband the police. So again, the critics are using a few people to make all Democrats seem crazy just like when they use the looting to distract from the root issue and the protests. Now, obviously in marketing, I know you don't have an entire paragraph to explain all that, so Democrats probably should just stick to demilitarize and keep the focus on that and the funding aspect. But at the same time, other cities have successfully disbanded and rebuilt their police. And shameless plug here, I wrote about that in my latest article called Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, the problem with police, quote, unions, unquote, which you can find either on Medium on our website, quicknewsdaily.com, and I'll put the link in the show's description. Now, I don't want to give too much time to this distraction, but I just want to end by saying that people who use this to justify voting against Democrats were actually probably never going to vote for Democrats anyway. And the snarky liberal in me wants to say, well, maybe we should just call it repeal and replace the police because Republicans just used that battle slogan for six years and nothing ever happened because of it. But in any case, Again, why does this matter to you? Well, just know that defund doesn't necessarily mean disband. And don't let this squabble distract you from the real issue of systemic injustice, which is what the protests are actually all about. Next up is some new polling data from NBC News. The most shocking number here is that a whopping 80% of registered voters think that the nation is out of control. Even 66% of Republicans believe that, which seems bad, but it can also mean that they think Hillary or Obama or Hunter Biden or Democrats are responsible for it, so maybe we shouldn't get too caught up on that number. But by a 2 to 1 ratio, the survey showed that people were more worried about the police officers' actions that killed George Floyd than the looting happening on the side of the protests. Biden's national lead on Trump is 7 points, 49 to 42, which I think is pretty good. Back in 2018, analysts said that Democrats have to win the national vote by at least 7 points to make up for all the gerrymandering, so I usually apply that to presidential elections as well. Plus, even back in 2018, the polls were off by about 6 points in Florida and Ohio, which I think is because there are these silent Trump voters out there who don't want to admit to it in polls, but feel comfortable voting for him in the safety and anonymity of the voting booth. And for some reason, Trump is still leading Biden in the who can deal better with the economy and who can cut the unemployment rate, which just really grinds my gears. There's this baked-in belief that Republicans are better with the economy, but all analysis shows that the economic stats get better during Democratic presidencies and worse under Republican. Plus, I think this is sort of like if a fireman started a fire and then put it out, and then he got awards and recognition for it. We're in this mess largely due to Trump and his actions, or more accurately, inactions on the coronavirus. So I have no idea why people still think he'll do better than Biden. But one most important stat is still out there, and that is ability to bring the country together. Biden absolutely clobbers Trump in this stat, where 51% of voters think that Biden will be able to bring the country together, and only 26% of people think that Donald Trump can do that. This means that a lot of Republicans don't even think Trump can bring people together. And this reminds me of a story Obama's campaign strategist David Axelrod said on his podcast, Hacks on Tap. He said that in 2012, on three out of the four metrics, who's a better leader, who's better with foreign policy, and who can do better with the economy, and they asked this to people who were just coming out of the voting booth, and voters thought Mitt Romney could do better in all these categories than Obama, but the one metric that Obama won, who do I think cares more about me? And it just shows that people want to vote for someone who they think has their back. And that is Joe Biden's greatest strength. He's one of the guys. He's extremely empathetic. And when that comes through is when he's strongest. Donnie Deutsch was on Morning Joe this morning, and he said this. He said, Trump is like a drunk driver, and Biden is the designated driver who will get us all home safely. And that Biden is the exact type of candidate that we need for right now. So why does this all matter? For one, it shows that we are not alone in disapproving of Trump. Not by a long shot. Also, this bad data and all the esteemed people speaking out against him are probably what triggered the pen tweet storm by Trump over the weekend, and even late until last night. Like, I'm talking he was still tweeting at midnight last night. On Saturday, he had over 200 tweets or retweets in a single day, and I can't tell you how long it takes to get to that number. And it always gets scary when he tweets that much, because he could always say something crazy, set something off. It's just not good when he tweets more. A brand new piece of news today, Democrats in the House have introduced a bill called the Justice in Policing Act, which according to NBC News, would ban chokeholds, including the one used on George Floyd, 
no-knock warrants in drug cases. It would require local police departments to send data on the use of force to the federal government and create a grant program that would allow state attorneys general to create an independent process to investigate misconduct or excessive use of force. And it would make it easier for people to recover damages when police departments violate their civil rights. And for the first time ever, it would make lynching a federal hate crime. So Democrats definitely moving swiftly on this, and we'll see if it ever gets taken up by Mitch McConnell. Who knows? I would... I don't trust him, so probably not, but who knows. By the way, those no-knock warrants are essentially legal breaking and entering, and it was just a horrible shame what happened to Breonna Taylor. They were in the wrong house, and when the when her boyfriend pulled the gun to defend themselves because, again, it's basically breaking and entering, everyone started shooting, and the cops shot Breonna Taylor, and she died. So probably a good idea to get rid of those for that sort of offense. Finally, over the weekend, the White House had even more fencing installed around it. And I'm just speculating here, but it's probably because our dear leader was scared for his life by some protesters yelling mean things at him. It's kind of getting, like, dystopian because you have the leader of the country holed up in something that is looking more and more like a compound every single day. Like the one they found Osama bin Laden in or the one Castro lived in. It's supposed to be the people's house. And I think it's probably a pretty good indicator that what you're doing is unpopular when you have to build a fence to keep people out of the people's house. Of course, protesters made lemonade out of these lemons, and they started hanging signs, posters, and pictures, turning it into a monument to George Floyd and other black individuals who have been the victims of crimes by the police, and raising awareness to the good cause, and all because Trump had more fencing put up. I just want to read you this wacky headline I found last night on Politico. I didn't didn't read it yet, but (laughs) this is just the headline. Chainsaw-wielding racist gets boost from top Trump aide as race protests sweep the nation. I mean, what are we, what are we doing anymore? That is a heck of a headline. So again, that's it for us today. If you're able to support the show, I've updated the donate page on our website, quicknewsdaily.com, where you can sign up for either Patreon or through PayPal. And I have instructions on that, but basically PayPal has no fees to give money. And Patreon's fees are kind of getting out of control, so I would recommend that if you plan on supporting the show. And uh, I do want to give an extra special shout out to our now executive producer through the end of the year, Gwen, for so graciously donating and um, allowing us to to run those ads on Overcast. The support truly does mean a lot, and uh, I thank each and every one of you for listening. Stay safe, and I will be back to give you the news again tomorrow.